The discovery of the Comet Atlas has created a lot of interest in astronomy. So I try to bring you up to date on this and answer some of the questions also. First, let us see what is a comet made of. Fortunately, we have evidence for that, and this is in the image from the spacecrafts. We have even landed one of our own spacecrafts on the comet. You may find the scene familiar. It looks like a ski slope in a mountain. So it is safe to say that they are made of ice, snow, and rocks. We have even mountains of rocks and snow on a comet. So that was the hard core or nucleus of a comet. So when a comet gets close to the sun, some of the ice will gradually evaporate. And with them carry some of the dust and rocks to the space. So in this way, a comet develops dust tail and iron or gas tail. The atmosphere which forms around the nucleus of a comet is called coma. And so this is what we will see with most of the comets. We know the size of the coma of the comet Atlas is five times the size of Jupiter. That makes it half the size of the Sun, only at this stage. But as the comet gets closer to the Sun, it will definitely get bigger. Comet Atlas is now at the constellation of Comelopordalis or Giraffe, but it is rapidly getting to the naked eye visibility limit. We don't know about the shape of the nucleus of this comet yet, but it can have any shape. Even something like a skull. Accidental. Of course, the shape varies as the ice and rocks separate from its surface. Some of you have asked what happens if you pass through the tail of a comet. This happened once in the past. We know that the gas cyanide was existing in the tail. Of course, the cyanide in the tail of the comet Halley was very thin. It didn't affect us at all. Although many people use gas masks to see if they can survive. What happened was that the armies found out that a very tiny amount of cyanide will not kill. So they used it massively in the thicker and denser amounts. This led to the death of millions of the soldiers in war. I hope such a thing will not happen this time. Another foggy and uh, frosty day. And the sun, beautifully shining.
What you can see there in the center is the Copernicus crater. To the right of it is the Kepler crater. And the dot, tiny dot, to the right of that Kepler, near the edge of the white area, where the down to it here, a little lower, is a black dot that's Grimaldi. That tiny white dot is the uh, magnetic anomaly called the uh, Rainer Gamma, or Rainer Gamma. As you can see, the thin layer of cloud that exists in the sky is moving. It's mist, practically. And, uh, yeah, the Italy-shaped uh, area to the top uh, is the Jura Mountains. And uh, and you can see a tiny dot also in that Jura Mountains called Plateau, actually. Crater Plateau, the philosopher. And the bright dot to the 2 o'clock in this image, if you imagine the top part is 12 and the lower part is 6, at two o'clock of the image, in the middle of the, in, in somewhere in the black patch, the white dot is Aristarchus, and the area around it is Aristarchus Plateau, the volcanic area. Yes, the clouds are making it really dark. I don't know what it is, what it actually should be. Yeah, and the circular feature, black circular feature at the top at 12 o'clock is, um, is the big black circle. Uh, is the Mare uh, um, Imbrium, Sea of the Rains, and uh, to the lower part of it, at 7 o'clock of that circle, what you can see is the mountains of the Apennine, the Apennine, yeah. 